Welcome back to Program Logic and Design. In this section, we're going to be discussing the steps involved in the program development cycle. Now, a programmer's job is writing instructions like those that we did in the Dublin program in the preceding section. But a professional programmer usually does not just sit down at a computer keyboard and just start typing. Most students just want to get going as soon as possible. They just open up the ID and start coding without any planning. And I must stress the importance that there, you must follow the steps for the program and development start cycle. Step one, understand the problem. Step two, plan the logic. These two are by far the most important steps when it comes to programming because they precede coding the program. So these are the most important for you guys to do. And a lot of people actually forget these two first steps and go to the code. And you know what actually happens is you land up sitting at your computer for hours on end trying to code when you could have actually, if you understood the problem a lot better and planned the logic a lot better, your coding would be simpler, easier, as well as your time frame will be shorter. Our fourth step of our program development cycle is when we use the software, a compiler or an interpreter to translate the program into machine language. Then we test the program with some data, we put the program into production, and then we maintain the program. So how the developmental cycle will look will be as such. You've got to understand the problem, plan the logic, write the code, translate the code, test the program, put the program in production, maintain the program, and then we start all over again. This is when they need to add new features. They want to add new features to the program. They want to um, um, add new graphics. Maybe there's a new problem which they need to add to the program and which you need to understand and then plan the logic and carry on. That is what we I mean by maintain the program. Now we're going to go through each one of these steps now for you to have a bit of understanding of each of these seven steps. Understanding problem is pretty straightforward, One of the, but it is the most difficult aspects of programming. You've got to think of your users or your end users. Okay, Examples will be the people that are going to be using the program. So if you're um, creating a library database, you'll be thinking of the librarian who's going to be using the database. They are the people for whom program is written for. Now, how are we going to understand the program is you're going to have to get some documentation. This is your supporting paperwork for the program. This will be things like research, um, interviews to the users, questionnaires, observations, discussions, sampling or data gathering. Now, a programmer's ability is to understand the user's needs by observing the user's job functions. In many organizations, the step of understanding the problem is performed by application analysis, not really programmers like yourself. But in other organizations, programmers perform both analysis and programming and may hold the job title of program analysis. This program analysis, you'll become a program analysis when you actually work for yourself. I always say to my students, you must think of the output first, then you can actually plan the input and the processing steps. Planning the logic is all about what this course is about. An algorithm is a sequence of steps or rules you follow to solve the problem. So an algorithm will be, okay, step one, think of the output. Step two, uh, plan the solution. Step three, do a bit of code. Step four, or grab more documentation for the problem to understand it a bit better. Now, most common planning tools are flowcharts. We'll discuss further later. Pseudocode, IPO charts, which is your input, processing, and output. It is basically a table which is divided into three sections one for input, one for processing, and one for output. So you input something, you process what you inputted, and then you output what you processed. Your TOE charts, which is your tasks, objects, and events, we will discuss this also a little further. Now, desk checking is walking through a program's logic on paper before you actually write the program. Um, I love to use Excel. I will give you some examples on how we actually do this. Now, the term desk checking is commonly used to describe the process of checking code for syntactical and logical correctness before actually compiling. Now this process was essential in earlier times when computing power was limited and scheduled and a programmer, programmer may have been able to complete only one compilation a day. 
Now, JS checking as well as IPO charts will be tested in your assignment at the end of the semester. So pay attention. Planning the logic is actually the heart of the programming process. If you have a look at this example here, this is planning the logic of a transformation system. Um, we've got alteration, transportation, storage, inspection. We've got OK. We've got to get data in. This will be our monitoring code. The action will be on to that. We will show here's the environments. These are the we got customers, regulations, suppliers, economy, comp competitors, technology. This is all our environment. Oh, and here's our inputs. What do we input? We input our capital, our materials, equipment. Look at all our connectors here showing this works here, this goes there. This is basically what planning the logic is all about, is drawing a couple of pictures, flowcharts. Basically, you are, the planning tools involve writing steps of program in plain English. So you don't need to know any code in this course, you just need to know how to speak English. Note, syntax is not important in this planning stage, but the sequencing of events from available input to desired outputs is crucial. Now planning the logic is what we deal exclusively in this course. Coding the program. This is by far probably what everybody enjoys doing the most. The planning's done, the planning of the logic's done, we've understood the problem. Now we can just sit down at our computer and we can code. There are hundreds of programming languages available. You choose your programming language based on its features. Now some features will be some have built-in capabilities, making them more efficient at handling certain types of operations. Example, HTML and CSS, they create and edit web pages. Um, Objective-C or iPhone apps, Java, C++ or Android apps. Ruby, Python, PHP, store information, they're like a server-side language. Um, programming languages are also similar in their basic capabilities. When I mean by basic capabilities, I mean that their input-output operations, their arithmetic processing, and other standard functions. Coding is so much easier than actually the planning step because all you have to basically do is just write in the language which you have chosen. Now, experienced programmers can successfully combine the logic planning and program coding in one simple step. But please note, when I say experienced, you've got a couple of years to get there. Right, using software to translate the program into machine language. We use a translator program, a compiler or an interpreter such as NetBeans or Visual Studio or JGrasp. But you must understand that a computer only knows one language, and that is machine language. So if you recall the definition of machine language, it um, represents millions of on and off circuits within a computer, and it's represented by a series of zeros and ones, zeros and ones. So what a compiler and interpreter does, it changes the co programmer's English-like high-level programming language into a low-level machine language, which I usually called the stupid language, zeros and ones, the binary language. So for syntax errors, it, that is the misuse of a language's grammar rules. It is also programmer corrects listed syntax errors, which the compiler will highlight for you. And you might need to recompile the code several times to make sure that all the syntax errors are, have been eliminated and been corrected. Figure 1.2 shows the how to create an executable program. It shows that when writing and correcting your program code, you will compile the program. If there are any syntax errors, they will be listed for you by your compiler. And then you'll write and correct the program code and you'll compile again. If there are more, you'll carry on that vicious circle. When there are no syntax errors, then you will only be able to execute the program. You'll only be able to run it. You will run it, then you will input your data and whatever the program needed to do, if it was to 
process something, the process the data, process that and turn it into information, that will be outputted for you by your executable program. I've got two questions for you. First one, which step is harder, planning the logic or actually com coding the program in your IDE? It would be planning the logic. Second question is, can any of you name a famous translator of a book? Now recall a translator would be used to code our program, to turn that into machine language. You can't, you don't have no, we don't know any famous translator of a book. You know book authors, yes. And they, so basically what I'm trying to get here is that we know famous programmers like Bill Gates because he was able to correctly understand problems and correctly plan the logic and then code the program. He managed to do his beautiful developmental cycle correctly. All right, our fifth step in our program and development cycle is testing the program. What are you testing for logical errors? All right, these results is when a syntactical correct statement, in other words, your program compiled, but the wrong one for the current context is used. So you got to test, meaning that you've got to execute the program with some sample data to see whether the results are logically correct. This is basically called the debugging. It's the process of finding and correcting program errors. I must stress the importance that you use appropriate test data to ensure that the code is tested correctly. Consider boundary conditions such as equal, minimum, maximum values. Those are sort of data that you will test. So what I mean by appropriate data, that if you have created a variable that is num, don't put a string in there. Put a num in there. There are a whole lot of debugging exercises at the end of every single chapter. We will be doing all of them. I will be doing some with you and you'll be doing some in class. It's a good practice for you to debug your own programs. I would like you put to ponder on two things for me for class. What are the possible impacts of less than thorough testing? And which is worse, releasing a product late or releasing it on tap without fully testing it? Now, after testing and documentation are completed, a program is put into production. Now, the process depends on the program's purpose, and this may take several months. Now, the entire set of actions an organization must take to switch over from using a new program or a set of programs is called conversion. I don't know if any of you recall the Y2K issue in the year 2000. What they called this year 2000 problem, they called it the millennium bug. What actually happened is that most programs made it really difficult to go from the years 1900 to the year 2000. And this was actually the problem. And the reason why it's the problem is because of dated records as well as your real time events. If you have a look at this electronic sign displaying the year incorrectly as 1900 on the 3rd of January 2000 in France. As you can see that during the year 2000, putting programs in production was a little bit tricky. All right, our final step, which is step seven of our program developmental cycle is maintenance. Now, maintenance is making changes after the program is put into production. Let's think of our production, our program as a beautiful car. You buy a new car, but then you have to service the, uh, the new car. You've got to maintain it. You've got to change its brake pad, its oil filters, its cam belt, etc. It's got every couple of years, you've got to do something to it. Or every couple of miles or kilometers, you've got to do something to it in order to keep it in a, a working order. Now, the common first job of a programmer is actually to maintain previously written programs. You've got to make changes to existing programs too. You've got to, how you do that is you just repeat the developmental cycle. You understand the problem, you plan the logic, etc. Now, software testing or software quality assurance can be a career of its own. Today, automated testing tools are available to attempt a thorough review of all the code in the program. 
as pointed out in our previous video, is that testing is a critical part of the SAS Red developmental process. You can see that we have Java application unit testing as well. You have many different tools that perform on a specific type of programming language which you will use. So please have a read through this article. It is incredibly interesting to see that your programming, which you're doing now, is just a stepping stone to a whole lot of things that you can do in the future. I have provided you the link and you should have it saved in your student data as well, this web page. I must point out that an error-free test of the program does not guarantee that all errors have actually been corrected. The most that one can actually really say is that all errors that have been identified have now been corrected. Please, I must stress the fact that to you guys that you must try break your program by entering incorrect values. Please join me in for the next video where I'll be discussing pseudocode statements and flowchart symbols.